Hello and welcome to Tea New Book Tuesday. I'm Lisa. I'll be your librarian today. We are going to discuss books that are on their way to Mobile Public Library. They are already in the catalog. You can put them in, on hold whenever they are coming in large print or audiobook. I will also note that. So, yes, plus we're going to discuss books that I'm giving away. I have a whole pile over here. So, let's get in to what we're going to talk about today. First up, okay, <laughs> I'm working this evening. It just, it's, it's a weird week. So I just got in here. I did most of my prep work yesterday for this show, for this stream. And uh, my tea is uh, Starbucks Tazo green tea. Because that was just the easiest thing if I'm going to come in at 1030. And, you know, throw this show together in half an hour. But that is my favorite tea from Starbucks. That's what I tend to drink. And I do always get it in the um, comically large... I think you can hold an entire bottle of wine in a, a Trenta. <laughs> you don't usually put ice in wine, though, in my defense. And also, it's not wine, it's tea. But, yes, it's delicious, and I enjoy it. And I will drink all of it probably over the course of the next hour. Because I am a fish. Uh... Okay, coming up to MPL includes a minor thing right now as I'm speaking, which is obviously Tuesday at 11 a.m. West Regional is temporarily closed, temporarily closed uh, because of like a building issue. I'm told the city maintenance people are on either on their way or on site, and we're still hoping to reopen later today. So keep on the Facebook page, keep on our social media. That's where we'll tell you when West has reopened. And obviously they want to reopen as soon as possible. Other things going on at West include that um, tomorrow they're going to have a knit and crochet meeting. So you can come to this if you just want to sit around and knit or crochet with people, like just socially. Or if you don't know how to knit or crochet, they will also teach you. So that will be tomorrow at West at 3 p.m. Here at Maine, we're going to teach a uh, how to build a website class using the free site Wix, W-I-X. That'll be this Thursday at 2 p.m. Uh, I know the teacher. She's very knowledgeable and will be very helpful if you're interested in building a website for, you know, virtually any reason. And also, again, on May 8th, singer-songwriter Evan Barker will perform at the People's Room of Mobile. The tickets are $30, but $10 of that comes back to Mobile Public Library to support our mission and all of those good things. I'm sure it will be a fantastic show. So if you're interested in seeing a great show and also supporting the library, you can do that on May 8th at the People's Room of Mobile. And that's all very exciting. And I'm afraid of what's next, honestly. Yeah, it's what I thought it was. So, um... I've been hesitant to pull this plug, but I think I have to. It's all for good reasons. But after like a year and a half, we are reaching the end of Tea and New Book Tuesday. I have loved every minute of this. I will save my final thoughts until the final episode, which will be next week. I'm going to finish out May and then... And then there will be no more live stream on Tuesdays. So, I, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it then. But it's, it's for all sorts of good reasons. I'm probably going to go run a branch soon, um, which is a step up for me. And I'm really excited about it. So, I can't do that and do this at the same time, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, just know that this has been one of the highlights of my career. So, let's get on to talking about... Today's books, which are going to be romance and historical fiction, uh, which has some really interesting titles. There were so many this week that I could barely narrow them down. So we're at like, I think there's 12 today, which is my maximum. But first, your favorite part of Tea New Book Tuesday and mine, uh, the giveaway. So I'm trying to give everything away. That's why there were five books last week and there are five books this week. Um, oh, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited. But 
also sad to be leaving you all. But okay, so let's get on to these books, starting with some nonfiction, Rebels at Sea, Privateering in the American Revolution. So this is about private sailors who, uh, freelance sailors, who proved essential to winning the Revolutionary War. And this author has written about the history of America's pirates and the history of whaling in the United States and also the 500-year-old history of America's hurricanes. So I'm sure this is a fascinating book if you're interested in the topic, but that's Rebels at Sea by Eric J. Dolan. Next up, All That Fills Us by Autumn Lyle. Lytle? Little? Something like that. Okay. In a last-ditch effort to make something of herself, an anorexic woman sets out on foot in a cross-country pilgrimage. As she faces the forces of nature and battles her inner demons, she'll come face to face with her disorder, disorder along the journey to healing, acceptance, and fulfillment. Okay, so that's all that fills us by Autumn Little. And thank you, Colin, for your nice words. I appreciate that. Um... Moving on to Part of Your World by Abby. I think it's Jimenez. We actually talked about this last month. I swear to God, I talk about something and then Carly will send me an arc to give away. And I'm like, well, okay. It's always nice to give them away when I talk about them, but it's not always possible. So this, to refresh your memory, which actually came out. Oh, it comes out today. You could have it in your hands by tomorrow. Uh, so this is about... Alexis. Okay. After a wild bet, gourmet grilled cheese sandwich, and a cuddle with a baby goat, Alexis Montgomery has had her world turned upside down. The cause? Daniel Grant, a ridiculously hot, hot carpenter who's 10 years younger than her and as casual as they come. The complete opposite of sophisticated city girl Alexis. And yet their chemistry is undeniable. While her ultra-wealthy parents want her to carry on the family legacy of re world-renowned surgeons, Alexis doesn't need glory or fame. She's fine with being a mere ER doctor. And every minute she spends with Daniel in the tight-knit town where he lives, she's discovering what's really important. Yet letting their relationship become more than a short-term fling would mean turning her back on her family and giving up the opportunity to help thousands of people. Bringing Daniel into her world is impossible. And yet she can't just give up the joy she's found with him either. With so many differences between them, how can Alexis possibly choose between her world and his? So that's Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Next, okay, so I needed the descriptions of these because this one again is sealed. <laughs> Which they did this to me, I, this is how they presented their arcs. I've, I've had an arc for this before and I've given it away. I think it went pretty quiet, pretty pretty fast. Um, but this is Anthem by Noah Hawley. And he is one of the creators of, I believe, yeah, the TV series Fargo. So why did I close that? What am I doing to myself? What am I doing? Okay. So Anthem by Noah Hawley is about, I'm using the description from the, the giveaway because that's what I got. An epic literary thriller set where America is right now, in which a band of unlikely heroes sets out on a quest to save one innocent life and might end up saving us all. So that's Anthem by Noah Wiley. And last up we have Jamie Ford's The Many Daughters of a Fong Moy. This is from the New York Times bestselling author of The Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet, this is a powerful exploration of the love that binds a family across generations. So that's The Many Daughters of a Fong Moy. And that comes out June 28th. And I forget which ones are pre. All That Fills Us is coming out soon. And, oh yeah, Rebels at Sea comes out May 31st. So if you want any of these five books, be sure to give it on the giveaway thingy. <laughs> the giveaway sheet and give me your name your information and how you want to pick it up and all that good stuff and then which one you want to enter for uh it's worth pointing out no matter what your name is on your 
Facebook page, no matter what your name is on your library card, I'm going to put it on hold under the name you give me on the giveaway form. Because we had some confusion where somebody won and she came in and gave in a, a completely different last name than the one she gave me. And they couldn't find the books for her. So yeah, you have three weeks to pick them up. I will inform people tomorrow. Uh, I should be on schedule to do it tomorrow, I think. We'll see. But yeah, so it should be noonish tomorrow. All right, let's move on and talk about some books. Oh, am I frozen? No, I'm not frozen. <laughs> no, internet, behave. Come on. Okay, Chef's Kiss by T.J. Alexander. Simone Laxper is a perfectionist pastry expert with a dream job at The Discerning Chef, a venerable cookbook publisher in New York City. All she wants to do is create the perfect loaf of sourdough and develop recipes. But when the discerning chef decides to bring their brand into the 21st century by pivoting to video, Simone is thrust into the spotlight and finds herself failing at something for the first time in her life. To make matters worse, Simone has to deal with Ray Lighton, the new test, test kitchen manager, whose obnoxious cheer and outgoing personality are like oil to Simone's water. When Ray accidentally becomes a viral YouTube sensation with a series of home brewing videos, their eccentric editor-in-chief forces Simone to work alongside the chipper upstart or else risk her beloved job. But the more they work together, the more Simone realizes her heart may be softening like butter for Ray. Things get even more complicated when Ray comes out at work as non-binary to mixed reactions. And Simone must choose between the career she fought so hard for and the person who might just take the cake and her heart. Uh, this is a debut novel, so if you want to try out a new author, T.J. Alexander is new. It also got a starred review from Publishers Weekly. So if you're interested in Chef's Kiss, it comes out May 3rd. Where am I? What am I doing? Okay, moving on. Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. They say you can never go home again. And for Persephone Frazier, ever since she made the biggest mistake of her life a decade ago, that has felt too true. Instead of glittering summers on the lakeshore of her childhood, she spends them in a stylish apartment in the city, going out with friends, and keeping everyone a safe distance from her heart. Until she receives the call that sends her racing back to Barry's Bay and into the orbit of Sam Florick, the man she never thought she'd have to live without. For six summers, through hazy afternoons on the water and warm summer nights working in his family's restaurant and curling up together with books, medical textbooks for him, and work-in-progress horror stories for her, Percy and Sam have been inseparable. Eventually, that friendship turned into something breathtakingly more before its spell fell spectacularly apart. When Percy returns to the lake for Sam's mother's funeral, their connection is as undeniable as it has always been. But until Percy can confront the decision she made and the years she spent punishing herself for them, they'll never know whether their love might be bigger than the biggest mistakes of their past. This is another debut author, and it also got a star review from Publishers Weekly. So if you're interested in Every Summer After, it comes out May 10th. Moving on to a very popular author, definitely not a debut. The Summer Place by Jennifer, do we think it's Weiner? It might be, it might be Viner or Weiner, something. <laughs> okay, when her 22 year old stepdaughter announces her engagement to her pandemic boyfriend, Sarah Danhauser is shocked, but the wheels are in motion. Headstrong Ruby has already set the date, just three months away, and spoken to her beloved Safta, Sarah's mother, Veronica, about having the wedding at the family's beach house on Cape Cod. Sarah might be worried, but Veronica is thrilled to be bringing the family together one last time before putting the big house on the market. But the road to a wedding day usually comes with a few bumps. Ruby has always known exactly what she wants, but as the wedding date approaches, she finds herself grappling with the wounds left by the mother who walked out when she was a baby. Veronica ends up facing unexpected news thanks to her meddling sister and must revisit the choices she made long ago when she was a best-selling novelist with a different life. 
Sarah's twin brother Sam is recovering from a terrible loss and confronting big questions about who he is, questions he hopes to resolve during his stay on the Cape. Sarah's husband Eli, who's been inexplicably distant during the pandemic, confronts the consequences of a long-ago lapse from his typical good guy behavior. And Sarah, frustrated by her husband, concerned about her stepdaughter, and worn out by challenges of life during quarantine, faces the alluring reappearance of someone from her past and a life that could have been. When the wedding day arrives, lovers are revealed as their true selves, misunderstandings take on a life of their own, and secrets come to light. There are confrontations and revelations that will touch each member of the extended family, ensuring that nothing will ever be the same. This was on the new book flyer, but I didn't get a chance to talk about it until now. Uh, we're also getting it on audiobook. If you're interested in, in The Summer Place, it comes out May 10th. All right, moving on to Asking for a Friend by Andy Oshie. Okay, so the tagline on this book is, No Woman Gets Left Behind. And the shorter description is, Three best friends are going to solve their relationship woes once and for all. 40-something Jemima's life is on track. Well, sort of. She just needs to bat her troublesome ex away for good. 20-something Megan is in the midst of her five-phase plan and is nearly ready for phase three, a relationship. While 30-something Simi has had more it's-not-use than I do's, than any I do's. These best friends decide it's time to ditch the dating apps and play the love game by their own rules. They're going to ask people out in real life, but only for each other. What could possibly go wrong? This got a star review from Publishers Weekly. Uh, almost everything today got star reviews, by the way, because that's how I had to narrow it down. That's also how we ended up with so many, because there's a lot of critically acclaimed romance and historical fiction coming out in the next month. So, if you're interested in asking for a friend, it comes out May 10th. All right. A Proposal They Can't Refuse by Natalie Kana. Kana? Sana? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Camila Vega is desperate to convince her family to update their Puerto Rican restaurant and enter it into the fall foodie tour. With the gentrification of their Chicago neighborhood, it's the only way to save the place. The fly in her mafongo? I think I got that one right. Okay. Her blackmailing abuelo says if she wants to change anything in his restaurant, she'll have to marry the one man she can't stand his best friend's grandson. Liam Kane spent a decade working to turn his family's distillery into a contender. Now he and his grandfather are on the verge of winning a national competition. Then Gran Granda hits him with a one-two punch. He has cancer, and he has his heart set on seeing Liam married before it's too late. And Granda knows just the girl, Camila Vega. If they're refused, their grandfathers will sell the building that houses both their businesses. With their futures on the line, Camilla and Liam plan to outfox the devious duo, faking an engagement until they both get what they want. But soon they find themselves tangled up in more than either of them bargained for. This got starred reviews from Library Journal, Kirkus, Publishers Weekly, and Booklist. It's probably on the short list for one of the best romances of the year already. It's not even out yet. Uh, but it comes out on May 24th. All right. Meant to Be by Emily Griffin. Let me get some tea. The Kingsley family is practically American royalty. Beloved for their military heroics, political service, and unmatched elegance. When Joseph S. Kingsley III is born in 1960, he inherits the weight of that legacy. Growing up with all the Kingsley looks and charisma, Joe should have no problem taking up the mantle after his father's untimely death. But he is also a little bit reckless, and can seem to figure out how to channel the expectations of an entire country. No one ever expected anything of Kate, on the other hand. She, true grew up, she too grew up in a single-parent household, just her and her mom scraping by in their small apartment. As a teenager, though, Kate is discovered for her looks, Modeling may be her only ticket out of the cycle of disappointment that her mother has always inhabited. Before too long, her face is everywhere, though she is a always aware that she'd be a pariah in her social circles if anyone knew her true story. When Joe and Kate's paths cross, their connection is instant. 
What remains to be seen is whether their relationship will survive the glare of the spotlight that follows Joe everywhere. And just as they find themselves in a make-or-break moment, the tragedy that seems to run in Joe's family, right alongside all that privilege, will repeat itself. This is on the new book flyer. Uh, so it probably already has holds on it by now. We're also getting the audiobook if you're interested in that. But if you're interested in Meant to Be, it comes out May 31st. All right. Okay, so moving on to historical fiction. This one is really interesting. Electra by Jennifer Saint is about Electra the Greek person. Could have looked this up before the thing, but I didn't look it up, did I? No. No, I didn't. Um, if you know what it is, then when I say all the names, you'll be able to recognize it. It's Greek, right? Is it Roman? It's Greek. I don't know. Tell me in a minute in the comments. <laughs> okay. Clymestra, the sister of Helen wife of Agamemnon. Her hopes of averting the family curse are dashed when her sister is taken to Troy by the feckless Paris. Her husband raises a great army against them and determines to win whatever the cost. Cassandra, princess of Troy, and cursed by Apollo to see the future, but never be believed when she speaks of it. She is powerless in her knowledge that the city will fall. Electra, the youngest daughter of Clymestra and Agamemnon. Electra is horrified by the bloodletting of her kin, but can she escape the curse, or is her own destiny also bound by violence? Okay, I was hoping one of you knew, but at any rate, it's a fictionalization of Electra's story, which is a classic myth from Europe. <laughs> this got star reviews from Publishers Weekly and Booklist. Uh, if you're interested in Electra, it comes out May 3rd. Moving on. Okay, so this one is a hell of a description. It sounds almost like nonfiction, but it's not. It's fiction. The Lioness by Christopher... Beaujolian, I think. Possibly. Beaujolian? If I'm... Oh, that one's definitely wrong. I don't know. Uh, by a man named Christopher. Okay. Tanzania, 1964. When Katie Barstow, A-list actress, and her new husband, David Hill, decide to bring their Hollywood friends to the Serengeti for their honeymoon, they envision giraffes gently eating leaves from the tall acai trees, great swarms of wild beasts crossing the Mara River, and herds of zebras storming the sandy plains. Their glamorous guests, including Katie's best friend, Carmen Tedesco, and Terrence Dutton, the celebrated black actor who stars alongside Katie in the highly controversial film Tender Badness, will spend their days taking photos and their evenings drinking chilled gin and tonics back at camp as the local Tanzanian guides warm water for their baths. The wealthy Americans expect civilized adventure. Fresh ice from the kerosene-powered ice maker, dinners of cooked gazelle, gazelle meat, and plenty of stories to tell over lunch back on Rodeo Drive. When Katie and her glittering entourage do what Katie and her glittering entourage do not expect is this: a kidnapping gone wrong, their guides bleeding out in the desert, and a team of Russian mercenaries herding them into Land Rovers, guns to their heads. As the powerful sun gives way to night, the gunmen shove them into abandoned huts. And Katie Barstow, Hollywood royalty, prays for a simple thing, to see the sun rise one more time. A blistering story of fame, race, love, and death set in a world on the cusp of great change. The Safari is a vibrant masterpiece from one of our finest storytellers. Uh, this was also on the new book flyer, and it did not have holds back when I did the May hits. That's all the ones that, that I mentioned are on the new book flyers. I sorted them by whether or not they had holds, but it may have holds now, and we're getting the audiobook. So if you're interested in The Lioness, it comes out May 10th. Okay, if we thought I butchered the last name, this should be interesting. <laughs> we measure the earth with our bodies by... Zering 
Yengzon Lama Zirin Yengzon Lama Lama? Something like that. In the wake of Chinese China's invasion of Tibet in 1959, Lamo and her sister Tenkyai arrive at a refugee camp on the border of Nepal. Lamo and Tenkyai survive the dangerous journey across the Himalayas into exile, but their parents did not. Now Lamo, haunted by the loss of her homeland and the memory of her mother, is trying to rebuild a life amid a shattered community. Lamo finds hope in the arrival of a young man named Samfel, whose uncle brings with him an ancient statue of a nameless saint, a statue last seen in their village and known for vanishing and reappearing in times of need. Decades later, the sisters are separated, and Tankyai is living with Lamo's daughter Dolma in Toronto. When Tankyai works as a cleaner and struggles with traumatic memories, Dolma is vying for a place as a scholar of Tibet studies. But when Dolma comes across the statue of a nameless saint in a collector's vault, she decides to reclaim it for her family and community, even if it means risking her dreams. This got a starred review from Booklist. So if you're interested in We Measure the Earth with Our Bodies, it comes out May 17th. Moving on to a book by the author of The Jane Austen Society, Bloomsbury Girls by Natalie Jenner. Bloomsbury Books is an old-fashioned, new and rare bookstore that has persisted and resisted change for a hundred years, run by men and guided by the general manager's unbreakable 51 rules. But in 1950, the world is changing, especially the world of books and publishing, and at Bloomsbury Books, the girls in the shops have plans. Shop have plans. Okay. Vivian Lowry, single since her aristocratic fiancé was killed in action during World War II, the brilliant and stylish Vivian has a long list of grievances, most of them well justified, and the biggest of which is Alec McDonough, the head of fiction. Grace Perkins, married with two sons, she's been working to support the family following her husband's breakdown in the aftermath of the war, torn between duty to her family and dreams of her own. Evie Stone, in the first class of female students from Cambridge, permitted to earn a degree, Evie was denied an acad academic position in favor of her less accomplished male rival. Now she's working at Bloomsbury Books while she plans to remake her own future. As they interact with various literary figures of the time, Daphne du Maurier, Ellen Doubleday, Sonia Blair, which is the widow of George Orwell, Samuel Beckett, Peggy Guggenheim, and others, these three women, with their complex web of relationships, goals, and dreams, are all working to plot out a future that is richer and more rewarding than anything society will allow. This got a starred review from Booklist, so if you're interested in Bloomsbury Girls, it comes out May 13th. The Colony by Audrey McGee Mr. Lloyd has decided to travel to the island by boat without engine, the authentic experience. Unbeknownst to him, Mr. Masson will also soon be arriving for the summer. Both will strive to encapsulate the truth of this place, one in his paintings, the other with his faithful rendition of its speech, the language he hopes to preserve. But the people who live here on this rock, three miles long and a half mile wide, have their own views on what is being recorded, what is being taken, and what is given in return. Over the summer, each of the women and men in the household, this French and Englishman join, is forced to question what they value and what they desire. At the end of the summer, as the visitors head home, there will be a reckoning. This got starred reviews from Publishers Weekly, Booklist, and Kirkus. If you're interested in The Colony by Audrey McGee, it will come out May 17th. Boop. There we go. And our last book of the day, The Foundling by Anne Leary. In it's 1927. And 18-year-old Mary Engel is hired to work as a secretary at a remote but scenic institution for mentally disabled women called the Nettleton State Village for Feeble-Minded Women of Childbearing Age. It's a long name. She's immediately in awe of her employer, brilliant, genteel Dr. Agnes Vogel. Dr. Vogel has been the only woman in her, in her class in medical school. As a young psychiatrist, she was an outspoken crusader for women's suffrage. Now at age 40, Dr. Vogel runs one of the largest and most self-sufficient public asylums for women in the country. Mary 
deeply admires how dedicated the doctor is to the poor and vulnerable women under her care. Soon after she's hired, Mary learns that a girl from her childhood orphanage is one of the inmates. Mary remembers Lillian as a beautiful free spirit with a sometimes tempestuous side. Could she be mentally disabled? When Lillian begs Mary to help her escape, alleging the asylum is not what it seems, Mary is faced with a terrible choice. Should she trust her troubled friend with whom she shares a dark childhood secret? Mary's decision triggers a hair-raising sequence of events with light, life-altering consequences for all. Inspired by a true story about the author's grandmother, The Foundling offers a rare look into a shopping, shocking chapter of American history. This got a starred review from Kirkus, so if you're interested in The Foundling, it comes out May 31st. All right, that's all our books for today. I will see you again next week when we will talk about May's science fiction, fantasy, and horror. We may throw in some literary uh, or some critically acclaimed books in there as well. But I will see you then. Bye. <laughs>